I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And here we are, the second Sunday of January in the year 2023. And I pray that you're having a blessed new year already. And happy new year to you if you didn't tune in on last week. And we do welcome you to Freedom Fellowship Christian Church's virtual worship experience where we're changing lives through our worship, our witness, and his word. Uh, We're going to resume with our sermon series from the Gospel of Mark. And if you remember back in October, we left off in the fourth chapter and we were talking about the seed, the sower, and the soils. And so we're going to read Mark chapter four, verses one through 12 from the New Living Translation. And this is how it reads. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the, on the shore. He taught them by telling many, many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath. And the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a 100 times as much as had been planted. Then he said anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So actually we read verses one through nine, one through nine of the gospel of Mark chapter four. And I would just like to give us a refresher of what we began discussing and talking about uh, as far back as October of 2022. Because when we took a look at this passage of text, uh, we noticed that there was a sower, the farmer, Uh, the seed, which symbolizes the word of God, and then the various soils. So here the sower is sowing seed and he is scattering the seed and it's falling on several different types of soil. And Jesus is teaching us about this seed, sower, and soil. He shares this parable with the the disciples and a large crowd that has gathered. And so I'm always excited to talk about Jesus' teaching because I believe that that needs to be an emphasis in the 21st century church. We must, if we have not done so already, get to the point where we are trying to do our best to teach the Word of God so that the Word of God can be comprehensible and understandable, and people will know how to uh, properly and appropriately apply the Word of God to their life and to their daily experience. Uh, Whenever I'm reading the Word of God, or even if I'm in a worship service where I'm not preaching and I'm listening to someone else teach and preach and share the Word of God, I'm looking for those practical points that will help me to live a better life and to be a better Christian uh, and to be a better Christ follower. Because after all, what good is it for us to read the Word of God and even get excited and enthusiastic about it, but then never apply it to our life and never receive the benefits that could come about as a result? And so here Jesus, he's teaching and he has attracted a large crowd, which is wonderful because it encourages me to know that as a spiritual leader in my community, if I teach the word of God, if I'm faithful to that responsibility, there's always the possibility of the word of God being effective and attracting large numbers of people. And 
Uh, we cannot always uh, gauge uh, the effectiveness of our ministry based on the size of the crowd that we appeal to or that the Word of God attracts, uh, but it's wonderful to see people respond to the Word of God and any spiritual leader in the community wants to see large numbers of people respond to the Word of God in order to feel that they are reaching people with the Word of God. But even Jesus, as he was teaching, and although he attracted a large crowd and a large congregation, he understood uh, that the large crowd shouldn't impress him because everybody wasn't there for the right reasons and for the right purpose. And therefore, the Word of God was not going to achieve and accomplish what it was sent forth to do uh, simply because uh, the people would not always respond rightly and appropriately to the Word that was shared and that was preached. And so the emphasis is on the fact that uh, the seed of God's Word falls on these different types of soils. And therefore, because of the soils that the seed uh, fell upon, it didn't always pr produce the desired results. It was not anything wrong with the seed. The problem lied within the soil. And for so long, I thought that when Jesus was teaching this parable that he was talking to four separate di and different people. Uh, but then I soon and quickly discovered that actually when Jesus was teaching this parable, uh, he was talking about one person who has the potential to respond in these four ways to the same word that he preaches, teaches, and that is being shared with us. And so he talks about the sower and the seed and the soils. The sower represents the servant of God. Uh, the seed represents the word of God. And then the soils represent the conditions of the human heart. And so he talks about uh, four different types of soils. When you take a look at verse four, it says, and he scattered some seed across the field and that seed fell on a footpath or a uh, the wayside or a rocky road or a stony road. And when that seed fell on that footpath, it says the birds came and ate it up or the birds devoured it. And then when you look at verses five and six, it says other seed fell on shallow soil and this shallow soil had underlying rock. Uh, so there was some soil there. And because of that soil, the seed sprouted quickly, but it was shallow soil with underlying rock, which didn't allow for the seed to have deep roots. And so when the heat of the hot sun, when it came upon this plant that was on shallow soil, it says eventually it withered and it died. And then in verse seven, other seed fell among thorns and there was some growth. Uh, it seems to imply that the growth may have been immediate um, but when it grew up, it was choked out. These tender plants were choked out and therefore there was no grain or there was no fruit that was produced as a result of this particular seed in this kind of soil. And then in verse eight, he lets us know, but then there were some soil or some seeds that fell on fertile soil and listen to what happened. Uh, the seed then sprouted in that soil. It grew in that soil, it produced a crop in that soil. And the crop that was produced was sometimes 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as what had been planted. And so we see the fruitfulness in the fourth type of soil. And it's encouraging us uh, to make sure that our heart is likened unto the soil that's described in verse eight. So what was the soil like in verse four? I describe it as a stubborn heart. A stubborn heart meaning that when the seed fell on the soil that was the footpath, it had been trampled upon 
uh, and therefore the soil had been hardened. So this is a person with a hard heart, a stubborn heart, uh, a person that is resistant to the word at best, outright rebellious toward the word at worst, and just rebels against the, the word of God. And therefore the result is uh, that word is snatched away or it is devoured by the enemy. It's devoured by the devil. And if you continue reading in uh, Mark, the fourth chapter, you will see that Jesus eventually gives the explanation of this parable to his disciples. And so that's where I get that from, that this seed, it was devoured by the devil. And that's the same way the devil operates, the same way he functions even today. That if we have a hardened heart, if we have a stubborn heart, if we are resistant to the word of God, if we rebel against the word of God, if we reject the word of God, then the enemy will snatch that word away and he will devour the word as well as devour our lives. And we can never live up to our God-given potential. We can never become what it is that God desires for us to be. Uh, we can never live out our divine purpose and it will lead to a life of dissatisfaction and unfulfillment. And there's been times even in my own life where I uh, was resistant to the word of God. And because I was resistant to the word of God, I almost missed out on God altogether. I have several different testimonies where I had sworn within myself that I wouldn't do certain things uh, and that I wouldn't engage in certain activities. And I'm not talking about ungodly activities. Of course, we're not expected to engage in ungodly activities as the people of God. But there were certain things, certain responsibilities that I thought that I would never take on. Uh, because I didn't see or I didn't recognize it as being the move of God and the hand of God in my life. And I had made up my mind what I would or would not do based on uh, some information that I had available to me. And when God was trying to lead me in the direction in which I said I would never go, I was very resistant to it. And because I was resistant to God's leading and to God's word, then I was also about to miss out on God. And therefore, uh, the result would have been miss out on the plan of God and the purpose of God for my life. And the enemy would have been successful at devouring the plan that God had for me. And I would have walked, I would have been walking outside of the will of God rather than walking according to uh, the word and the will of God. And so we have to be careful that we're not resistant, that we're not rebelling against God's word, outright rejecting God's word, that we don't have a hard heart and that we don't have a, a stubborn heart. And it's easy to have a hard heart because remember the footpath was like concrete because it had been trampled on and stepped on by others. And so it compacted that soil. And the experiences that we have in life uh, can cause us to become hardened. And then the seed of God's word sometimes finds that kind of a heart difficult to penetrate because of our response to the word of God, that of resistance. But then he also talked about a superficial heart in verses five and six. When you take a look at the New Living Translation, it talks about a shallow heart. I call that a superficial heart. Uh, it really doesn't have any uh, deep root structure whenever the seed of God's word falls upon it. What's interesting about this shallow superficial heart is that it looks promising initially because it said that there was immediate growth and that's because of the emotional response to the word of God. And so it shows uh, some promise, some signs of potential. But then when hardships come, when difficulties come, when trials and tribulations come, when sickness and suffering and sorrow, when that comes about, when life happens, uh, then that's the 
heat of the day, the sun of the day. It scorches uh, that seed and that tender plant, and then it eventually dies. And I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen this happen in my own life for one, but in the lives of others as well, uh, where they're energetic and they're enthusiastic uh, immediately when they hear the word of God, especially in our worship services and such. Uh, but then it's short lived because as soon as they move beyond the facility, uh, it seems as if they forget the word and they lose their enthusiasm and life hits them. And now they are discouraged and disillusioned with life and even doubting God. And so uh, we have to be careful uh, that we don't uh, allow ourselves to just respond emotionally and superficially to the word of God and get excited for a moment. And then we lose that enthusiasm when life happens because it's the word of God that will carry us through uh, this challenging life in which we live. And when I think about this, I think about my own dietary um, plan. Uh, and my, my poor diet actually, uh, because <laughs> there's times that after I've eaten an unhealthy meal and that I engage in conversation with other individuals who have chosen to eat healthy and exercise properly, and maybe they had experienced weight gain in the past, but now they're slim and trim, they're fit and they're looking good. And I look at them after I've eaten a hearty, unhealthy meal, and I'm motivated for at least that moment uh, to join them on their journey. Why? Because I want their results. I want to experience the results that they've experienced, but then I lose that enthusiasm. Why is that? Because I don't wanna do what's required. I don't want to do what they did. I don't wanna go through what they had to go through in order to get the results that they now experience. And too often that's the way we even treat the word of God. Um, we look at what the word of God promises us and we would like to partake in those promises, but then we don't want to avail ourselves to the divine plan of God and allow him to take us through the processes uh, and the experiences that we need to go through in order to get to the promise that he has in store for us. We want the results, but we don't want to do what's required. He said that's a shallow, superficial heart that uh, lacks roots. But then uh, the other heart is in verse 7. It's a skeptical heart. In verse 7, it talks about the seed that fell among thorns and there was some growth, but then it was immediately choked out. Uh, and so what we see is that when it talks about this seed being choked out, this tender plant being choked out, it's like it's it drowned uh, because it's a skeptical heart. It's a doubtful, disbelieving heart when it comes to belief in the word of God and putting trust in God and having faith in the word of God. It's doubtful, it's disbelieving, it's skeptical, and it will allow for other things and even other people to choke out the word of God. So it's putting more faith, more trust, more confidence in other things and in other people rather than to put the faith, the trust, and the confidence in the one person who truly deserves it and in the one thing, and that is the word of God. And so we allow even our pursuit of things and um, superficial and shallow relationships with other people to crowd out God and to crowd out the word of God and to crowd out the things of God. Many times we see individuals who refer to themselves as Christian. They'll say that they're Christians, but really Christianity and their walk with the Lord is low on the totem pole because they have all of these other pursuits that take priority over their relationship with God. And so it's drowning that word of God and our relationship with God. It, it, it just suppresses that relationship uh, and it never grows and develops uh, into what it should be and what God desires for it to be. And we, once again, don't live out our 
plan, per, the God's plan and purpose for our lives because we've allowed these things to drown out what God desires for us and even crush uh, his divine plan. But then lastly, the good news is there's the soft heart, the soft heart, the receptive heart. Uh, this is the dynamic heart where growth, development, and maturity takes place. But not only that, it produces fruit. When you read uh, verse eight, it says that this, the seeds fell on this fertile soil. And as a result of that, the seed, it sprouted, it grew, it produced a crop, some 30 fold, some 60 fold, some even a hundred times as much as what had been planted. This was a dynamic experience of a lot of growth, development, maturity, and fruitfulness. And I want to emphasize fruitfulness because the fruit is produced not only for the benefit of the individual, but for the benefit of others, for the benefit of others. And so when others see that good fruit, when they experience that good fruit through an encounter with that good soil, that soft-hearted person, uh, then it can lead to um, a relationship with Christ. It can lead to something that's satisfying and beneficial to other people, something that is attractive and appealing and will uh, cause them to become inquisitive about why are you so different and how can you be so joyful, especially in such a cruel and wicked world in which we live and how can you make it through so many of the trials and challenges and difficulties of life because uh, I've seen you go through those things and it's not like you don't ha have those experiences like others, uh, but uh, you're able to push through, you survive the experience, but better yet, instead of surviving it, you actually thrive in the midst of it. And so that's the kind of life the Lord wants us to live. That's the kind of relationship he wants us to have with him. Uh, he wants that seed of his word to fall upon fertile soil and produce great fruit for the benefit of the kingdom of God and to bless other people, particularly individuals that don't know him and don't have a relationship with him. And if they see our good works, He's then hopeful that they will acknowledge those good works, but then give glory to the one who deserves it. And so uh, this right here is really a challenging message for us. It's not one of those shouting messages, but it's a teaching message. This is a teaching moment, and it's challenging us to have the right heart attitude toward the Word of God whenever it is shared with us through preaching, teaching, witnessing, uh, even when shared from some mature saint, uh, and when it challenges us, when it's something that we don't want to hear, but we need to hear it, how do we respond to it? I want to close out by saying this. Too often what we see in our world today is that when our lives don't align itself with the Word of God, then we want to change the Word and adjust it to fit our lives. But what God desires is that when our lives don't match up to the word of God, don't change the word, change your life. Allow the Lord to change our life by way of the word of God and the spirit of God to fit the divine plan, the divine scheme that God has in place for the people of God so that we can grow into and become uh, who he desires for us to be. So we need to make some life changes in order to be all that God intended for us to be. In this world, we will never reach that plane of perfection, but we can celebrate the fact that we're not what we used to be, although we are not yet what we're going to be. But understand this, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but one day we're going to be just like him. That should be our goal. Prayerfully, that is our heart's desire. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I pray that this message has blessed you in some way, has benefited you in some way, has motivated you in some way, inspired you in some way, or maybe even challenged you in some way. 
Uh, our prayer is that you would continue to pray for us even as we attempt to share the word of God with you. And then we also pray that you uh, would find, uh, find it placed upon your heart by way of the Holy Spirit to invest in our ministry spiritually. You can do so by Givelify or mailing your gifts uh, to the P.O. box uh, that's listed on the screen. And just make up your mind to have a soft and tender heart. Be receptive to the Word of God and allow the Word of God to lead, guide, and direct your life and experience all that God has in store for you. Because I guarantee you there's nothing like the joy of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the peace of God, those intangibles that we desperately want and need but seems to evade us because we're looking for all of those things in all of the wrong places. And we want to encourage you to become a part of our fellowship. Uh, make it official. You can join Freedom Fellowship Christian Church. Uh, you can come first by joining yourself with Christ and becoming a Christian and then allowing me to be your pastor and to continue to share the Word of God with you and to help you in the discipleship process. But don't just be a consumer. Be a contributor. God has gifted you with certain abilities, and you should use those abilities for the benefit of someone else. And I'm telling you, it's a fulfilling and it's a satisfying experience when you are able to use what God has placed on the inside of you to bless someone else. Uh, please pray for us. We'll pray for you, and we look forward to getting with you on next week. God bless you.